Hey guys, welcome back to another lesson for, of technology. This time, animation at home. Ooh, stop motion. What is, first, what is animation? Hmm, what is animation? If you've heard one of my previous lessons on animation, you probably would know. Uh, it is a sequence of images created through art that give the illusion of motion. It's not just something moving, it's something looking like it's moving, even though it's not. Some of the first types of animation ever made were the phoenicistoscope, this circle on the left, and the zoetrope. Uh, they were some of the very first most basic kinds of animation ever made. Uh, same with flip books. Flip books, uh, they also have just a series of images. Uh, like Phoenicistoscope and Zoetrope, they don't, they're not actually moving. You see, they're just a spin, it's a spinning wheel. And same with the flip book. It's just a stationary picture. And if you flip through the pages real quick, each little picture is slightly different. And it looks like it's moving gives the illusion that it's moving. But what is stop motion? Hmm. It's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting one, for sure. It's an animation technique, of course, where objects are slightly moved between individually photographed frames. So it's like, it's like other animations, um, but instead of being drawn, it's simply objects that are moved just a tiny bit each frame. If you don't know what a frame is, we'll go over that in a second. Uh, like hand-drawn animation, it gives the illusion of motion. For example, Wallace and Gromit here. Animation vocabulary. A frame. What's a frame? Well, this is a frame right here, this dog. A frame is just a single picture uh, in an animation. And just one single picture. Frames per second. What does that mean? Well, it's how many frames you're seeing every second, the frames per second. It's how fast your animation is being played. For example, here we have a dog, and if I go and make a very slow frames per second, you'll see him starting to sort of look like he's moving. He's kind of going pretty slow. My frames per second is like two per second, maybe. If I go faster though, whoa, he really looks like he's starting to move there. That's really fast frames per second, like 40, I don't know. Anyways, there's one more term, onion skin. And that means the shadow of the last frame. Now you'll see what I mean when we get finally into our activity, but uh, it's just a kind of a, a ghost image of what you did last. And it helps you to make a slight movement from that and, and make your next frame. Uh, it just helps you make an animation, basically. Stop motion history. Aha. Let's talk about stop motion from a long time ago. The first ever stop motion movies uh, was, one of the first ever, was Bob's Electrical Theater uh, by Segundo Chomon. And that was made all the way back in 1906, which was, that's almost 120 years ago now. And this movie was really good for its time. It looks like it could have been made just maybe even recently, actually. The, the, the detail on the sets and all the pieces and the way he made it work as a story uh, with the kids basically kind of being bored and then getting out their, their play set and then having these dolls just really well animated look like they're playing or fighting or whatnot. It's really good animation for 120 years ago. But over the course of the next almost 100 years of filming, uh, stop motion and other techniques kind of like stop motion really dominated in movies and in special effects in movies too. Like for example, one of the, one of the oldest, most famous ones, The Lost World, the original Lost World. They animated the dinosaurs with stop motion. And of course, the original King Kong was stop motion. Jason and the Argonauts, that had some really great stop motion. 
with the hydra and the hydra <laughs> and uh, skeleton armies that looked like they were coming alive mixed with live action it was very well done Finally, we come to kind of more modern-ish times. Jurassic Park was made in 1993. And originally, actually, Jurassic Park was going to use stop motion for its special effects for the dinosaurs. And there's lots of test footage, as you can see, that still exists of them trying to make these dinosaurs in stop motion. But the director, Mr. Steven Spielberg, he, he actually decided, uh, I don't really like the way it looks, actually. Uh, and instead, he used a combination of robotics and uh, computer-generated graphics, CGI, as a way to animate the dinosaurs in the film. And uh, after that, really, that was kind of marking the almost like the end of stop motion as special effects used in movies, uh, main, big main movies at least. Uh, so computer graphics kind of really took on the place of stop motion after that. But there's still stop motion used in modern movies. It's not like it's just dead. There's lots of stop motion in modern movies. For example, Nightmare Before Christmas was almost all stop motion techniques. Coraline as well. Those are kind of older, newer movies. But we've got movies made just last year like uh, Farmageddon with the uh, Wallace and Gromit people and uh, Rilakkuma from Japan. They use stop motion techniques and they were made just a year ago. So stop motion is still very cool and used today. Finally, what are we going to be doing today? Ooh, maybe you guessed. We're going to be making stop motion movies, if you can handle it. Uh, <clears throat> we'll try to, and I want you to try to at least make at least 20 frames. You can make way more. You could make a whole movie. You could make a thousand frames if you really got into it. We have so much time at home, right? Um, and then try to post your video uh, on Seesaw or wherever we're posting it. Next, uh, to get started, watch my next little piece, my tutorial on how to get started. All right, here we go. Here's your instructions on how to make a stop motion video. So we're going to click on this little tiny link here click and it'll take us to the Chrome store. Now you you can do this on a Chromebook easily or any computer that's running the Google Chrome web browser. And then you're going to click the blue button add to Chrome and then it's going to have a little thing that pops up that says you need to click add app. Click and then it downloads the stop motion animator. And then you can click launch app. And here we have it. And I need to go get like a toy or something that I want to animate now. Okay. Oh, here's Godzilla again. Okay. So to make a frame and to start your animation, you're going to need to go and click on capture. Once you position your toy and your screen, however you want to, Make the video. Make sure you can see uh, your whole stage you want. And okay, I think I'm going to have Godzilla come in off the side of the screen here. Every time I take a video, I'm going to make sure my body is outside of the picture, so it just looks like my toy is moving around. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to push push capture, click, and you'll notice now. There's like a ghost image. And if I move Godzilla, that ghost image is there. What was that called again? Oh, yeah. Do you remember? Onion skin. Here's the onion skin of my Godzilla. And I move him just a little bit. You want to move just a little bit. Okay? And then your animation will look really smooth. And I'm going to push capture again. Boop. And then I'm going to move him again. Capture. And you're going to keep moving him just a little bit at each time and keep pushing capture. And then you'll get a cool movie at the end. Now I can have like another toy come in off the other side or something. However I want to do it. But make sure your body's outside of the picture. 
Here we go. Ooh, ooh. Here comes another toy. Capture. Each capture is a different frame, okay? There we go. I don't want to move them too much because they don't look like they're jumping around too much. There we go. Now it's best if you get a toy uh, that has lots of movable parts because then you can move the parts just a little bit and it'll really look like they're coming to life. So I'm going to move just a tiny bit. See how I'm just moving just a teeny tiny bit? The, the less you move your character and the more frames you take, the smoother your animation will be. Okay, let's take a look at it so far. I can play it with the play button over here. Okay, and click play. Ooh, pretty cool so far. I want to add a lot more, but this is just an example. Uh, so I'll save it, and I'll show you how we do the next part. So I'm going to, to save the video, you're going to click save, and you can title it. Okay, and you're going to click OK. Click, and then it downloads to your computer. Now you just need to close the animator program, and you need to go to the tab back at the top for Seesaw or wherever we're uploading. So I'm going to go to Add Response right here, right here, and I'm going to click Add Response. Boop. And it should bring me to my response upload, okay, right here. So upload a movie. So I'm going to click Upload. Boop. And it should uh, bring me to this page, and I want to select select from computer, okay? So right down here, click that. And now I look, and it should bring up a little window with my video. The video should be near the top, and if you, if you gave it a name, you should be able to see the name. And there's mine. I can double click on the video, or... I can click on it and then click open right here. Now, to play my video, I can just click play and oh, look at that. I added a little more. Look at that. Let's let's try it one more time. Yeah. And when you're all done and you think you're ready to to put it on seesaw, you're going to go up and click on the green check mark. <gasps> So good job. Uh, if you made a video, I can't wait to see all of your guys' cool, cool animations you make.